Farmstead. Nothing better than life on the farmstead. said that I had too much wood. Where are we gonna store it? And that I couldn't keep it all. And I didn't really like that. So I am building a tent to keep wood in. It's gonna be filled with wood. <laughs> I am putting the tent is heavily sloped so I started by just taking the tractor and scraping away the earth to get it a little bit more level. walk off the back and raise it up, but it'll be that much less that we're gonna need to do to make it so that the floor is level for the tent. I love deliveries. Especially when they come with a forklift. It's like a show! And we'll pull it over there to do the back corner. Yeah. And then go off of there. Michael handed me a rake. Um, and there's like a tractor, uh... I thought the whole point of the tent was that we didn't have to do this. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was that we didn't need to build walls and a roof. Overdo- okay. It still needs a floor. This will make it so we have a nice level space that we can stack the wood so that it won't warp just because of the slope of the ground. It's definitely a lot more involved than I was picturing. I'm supposed to be meeting a member at the Makerspace today. It still needs a floor. Do you need help? Are you good? I need help. Uh, I guess I'm gonna be a bit late. Sorry. All right, so framing out a floor is not that complicated. I'm going with two by six pressure treated pieces. I got them in 10 foot lengths because we have a 10 foot by 20 foot tent. So I'm gonna do it in two sections that'll be two 10 foot by 10 foot squares that will then be attached together. Super easy, anyone can do this. Maybe not quite as well as I do this, but anyone can do this.
Pro tip, never build in place. Always build elsewhere and then bring it where you want it to be. I might have underestimated the weight a little bit. It was really heavy, so good thing I have a tractor. After getting the frame to where I wanted it to be, I just need to use the shovel to make sure that it is totally level at this point. Shovels are not my favorite tools. I far prefer the bucket of my tractor, but sometimes a tractor might be overkill. Pro tip number two there. It's beautiful. Thought, but why don't you build the second half in place? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So Michael's doing the second half by himself, and I am running a bit late to the makerspace. <laughs> I'm meeting a new member today. His name is Dick, and he actually came to the slab sale and purchased a big walnut slab. wants to do a big resin pour for the first time ever uh, and make it into a desktop for his new home in town. He asked for my help uh, planning it all out and getting started. For a big resin pour, a lot of it comes down to constructing a great mold. This just needs to be a hollow box that has dimensions that will fit your slab comfortably. Next, this mold is gonna get lined with Tyvek tape or some sort of mold release that the resin won't adhere to. Dick's a pretty experienced woodworker, so he was gonna handle constructing this all on his own once I gave him some direction. And then just call me back when it was time to pour the resin. Meanwhile, back at the farmstead, I built the second 10 by 10 section, bringing it to a total of 10 feet wide by 20 feet long, the perfect dimensions for my tent. Pretty neat how that happened. But this time, I will admit, I did build it in place, so I guess pro tip number three would be ignore pro tip number one. So now that I have a floor, the tent needs to go on top of the floor. And I didn't build the tent in place. It's on the other side of the property. So I guess I'm just gonna pick it up and bring it over there. It's not that heavy. And I have a tractor. from Dick that said that he was ready for the resin pour, so I headed over to his house. We're gonna be pouring this in place at his house because uh, the thick pour resin takes a few days to harden sometimes, and we didn't want it sitting in the middle of the makerspace, just <laughs> getting bumped or getting spilled or whatever. It's probably enough trimming 
first thing we did was reinforce everything with some hot glue. Oh, it's ready. And then we mixed up the resin. Very cool. Dick wanted this to be colored uh, kind of a chocolatey brown to play off the colors in the walnut. So I mixed this up for him. It's a combination of black charcoal powder and a coppery pigment. My go-to move is starting with a very shallow pour of a faster hardening resin. This will do a couple things. It allows you to practice your colors because most of this is gonna end up planed off anyways. Also, it's going to make it very easy to identify any potential leaks in a low stakes manner. There's just less that can physically spill out on the floor if you didn't get it completely sealed. When this solidifies, it's going to plug up any of those little leaks. So when you're going in with the bigger, heavier pour of the resin that takes a lot longer to get tacky and solidify, you know you have a very strong leak-proof mold that will handle it well. That one might almost have <laughs> With a thick pour like this, you want to make sure that you are using a resin that can handle a thick pour like this. They're not all the same, and you can very easily end up with a big mess for yourself. This was really fun to do and I cannot wait to get this unmolded once the resin sets up. While Brooke was splishing and splashing in the resin, I was doing the heavy lifting. So attaching the tent to the floor was not that hard. There are two holes in the feet of each leg of the tent and I just put a screw into each of them into the floor. This was a very inexpensive tent that I found on Amazon. I have no idea how it's gonna hold up, especially since we have the harsh winters in New England and heavy winds sometimes, but if it doesn't, it, it solved the problem for now, gave me a structure, and later on we'll just build some walls, maybe even a roof. And now, all it needs is to be filled up with wood. Next time at Maker's Workshop. I wasn't sure if I should eat the mushrooms or not.